Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. Welcome back to King's Quest 6. I hope everyone had a, a great holiday. It is January 1st, first day of 2017. May this year be slightly less crappy than the last one. But, but hey, we come into the Sierra Lands for escapism. Screw real life. Okay, so last time we landed here. I think we did pretty much all the basics, and now we have these gnomes that don't let us get this way nor this way. And then we notice this sort of uh, awake clam over here, or an oyster. No, it's an oyster. It's definitely an oyster. One of the oysters is sitting up in bed and doesn't look very happy. He seems to be the only one who can't sleep. Mm. In the oyster's mouth, Alexander can see a glint of white. White. Uh, that's all. The, that's the way all voice actors are trained to say the word white. You know, white. You gotta put about eight H's in front of white. White. Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Oh, I'm so weary, but I can't sleep. I have a terrible ache in my mouth. It's so weird to know that that voice, just like Webby from uh, uh, DuckTales, I think. Yeah, I think I put it up there. Is God, how old is she? It sounds like it's actually coming from a small child. Anyway. What's wrong with your mouth? No offense, but it hurts too much to talk. Don't you worry. I have something here that can put anyone to sleep. If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of forty half dulcimers, divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of ten fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of fifty-three and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Mm. All right, see, that's your opening to go in there and get the pearl that's keeping her awake. But I'm kind of curious to see how long this book goes on. 69 centadrills by 3,023 and 6 sevenths puns, not punts, as might be expected. This is not to say, however, in any sense whatsoever, that deviations in mean temperature of 5 or 6 dregs or so. Mm. Keep going indicate a fabrication or derivation sufficiently broad enough to exacerbate the conclusions uncovered in due course with regards to the dimensions, consistency, mass or thickness inherent in the menial suckling grouse. Mm. <laughs> now it just stays open. <laughs> mm. Uh. Uh, she's wigging out. The poor little oyster falls into an uneasy sleep, though it's clear he is still not resting easy. Alexander decides to leave him to his nap. Uh-oh. Does that mean I've lost my chance? Is that a one-time thing? I've never actually listened to the whole book before. Alexander doesn't want to wake up the sleeping oyster. Oh... Can't be. Let me zip in and out again, and maybe he'll be awake when I come back. Oh, okay, thank God. Still awake. All right. What's wrong with your mouth? No offense. Okay, phew. Okay, I thought that was, like, if you didn't grab the oyster pearl right then, then, yeah, you put yourself in an unwinnable state. But King's Quest Six is too well made for that. I don't think there were any real permanent dead ends to speak of. Actually, and I don't think that the book is all that uninteresting. I think it's just Alexander's delivery. And he's like, two dulcimers raised to the half degree of blah, blah, grouse geese, yada, yada. If you put a little bit of life into it, I think we can make that book interesting. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of 40 half dulcimers divided into equal parts by a third of cackle of grouse geese put over the result of 10 fine mackerels, albeit small. Fine mackerels stretched over the total of 53 and an eighth bottles of wildebeest lard yields a gilded minnow of precise measurements 2,069 centadrills by 3 
million twenty-three and six-seventh punts, <laughs> not puns, <laughs> like you'd be expecting. This is not to say, however, in any sense whatsoever, that deviations in mean temperature of five or six dregs or so indicate a fabrication or derivation sufficiently broad enough to exacerbate the conclusions uncovered. In due course, with regards to the dimensions, consistency, mass, or thickness inherent in the menial suckling grouse. Uh, how are you guys feeling after that one? Better? I, uh, I admit the lullaby music was a bad choice, but I, I could have stayed awake through that. Would you like me to... Hey, that would be great! Two dulce... Mm. Uh, oh, that was fast. Yields a... Mm. Gimme. Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. His hand is cut off. Ah, uh, the little oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. All right, now he's got to put up with the snoring sound effect. Oh, no, never mind. It's just the one. Great. Okay, so last time we got ourselves busted by the gnome that could smell me, but fortunately I have a very stinky flower. Colors of flame burst from the center of the incredibly stinky flower and drip onto its petals. The flower's appearance is as flamboyant as its smell. Just something about this game. Even the descriptions and the way that they're read just fills me with just so much love for this game. Okay, let's give this another try. Come on out, boys. I fear scars of the aisle. All right. Here you go. You want something to smell, boy? Take a big old stinky whiff of this thing. Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Jumbo nose. Tom Troll I am. That's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. Now, can't the rest of you just take his word for it? Don't you Listen, trust him? Hark you, Grovenor. Do your duty as you swore. With your ears, please tell us more. All right. Now, um, I'm not sure what happens if I just stay quiet. If I just stay quiet, wouldn't he just be like, Oh, nothing's here. Let's test this theory. Does he hear my heart beating? Hello? My ears can't miss that strong heartbeat. Ah. A man it is, a man we greet. A man, a man, so say our ears. We shall send him to his beer. To his beers? Did you say to my beers? Probably should have saved before that little experiment. Okay, that's the way it could have happened. Let's try playing the flute for him. Alexander plays the flute for the gnome with the huge ears. Hmm, must be a singing bird. A flute, it's true, is a harmless thing. But the man who blows it, there's the sting. A man, a man, so say our ears. We shall send him to his beer. Send him to his beer? What, what does that mean? Oh, okay, so I looked up the King's Quest Six transcript and find the word. The word is beer, B-I-E-R. Which, according to Wikipedia, is a stand on which a corpse, coffin, or casket containing a corpse is placed to lie in state or be carried to the grave. Okay, so it's the the cart that the casket is on. Okay, so there's the death allegory that we were looking for. Thank you, Internet. Oh, hey there. So we just moseyed back to town uh, because we have the flute which is not enough to fool the gnome of the ear variety, so we're gonna have to get something that uh, sounds a little bit less human, which he has, but um, I forgot that when you wander back here, he mentioned, oh yeah, there's some old stuff of that magic guy I gotta throw out, and I'm not sure what trash pickup and delivery, if there's like some sort of um, land of the Green Isles landfill, but he just sort of tosses it in this big pot and just sort of forgets about it. A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. Guess it doubles as your dumpster. 
Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. Hmm. It also seems like that exploding gum wrapper might come in handy for a small fire, but uh, I don't know. Good day, Prince Alexander. Love it. Shows me some respect. Okay, and now every time we come into the pawn shop, we have to find something new to play with. So we already checked out the bear. We learned all about that. The wings, Daedalus and Icarus and all that kind of stuff. What about uh, the stuff up here? I never really noticed this horn. A horn, probably used for drink or powder, hangs from the ceiling. The horn has plenty of nothing to say. Uh, that was kind of a short one. Let's see what the water skin is here next to it, too. Maybe it has some sort of Quest for Glory reference? A worn leather wine skin is suspended from the ceiling. Or not. The dusty shop remains peacefully quiet. The dusty shop... Oh, the horn has something to say, but the wine skin, no? Lame. An old suit of armor stands in the pawn shop. It looks like a vigilant guard against thieves and carpet salesmen, even though it is headless. The Man of Steel is stumped for an answer. Oh, must resist Superman reference. Perhaps it is true that our ancestors were smaller as a rule, for that suit of armor Pink. looks a pinch too tight to fit Alexander. Besides, in this climate, it would be awfully hot. All right, King Bear says it's time to move on. Might I trade for that mechanical nightingale on the counter? Certainly. What do you wish to offer me in trade? Uh, well, the only other thing I have of equal value, as we discussed before, was the flute, so here. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. Oh, I was kind of hoping the game would be smart enough since I already mentioned I want to trade for the Nightingale. It's like, yeah, what do you want for trade? Here's the flute. Okay, there's your Nightingale. But it just sort of starts as if... You're beginning the conversation from zero. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very good, Prince Alex. It is always a pleasure doing business with you. Pink. Enjoy the mechanical nightingale and feel free to bring it back anytime. Thank you. All right. Now, with the nightingale in tow and also a bottle of ink, which we should probably take a closer look at, Alexander's carrying a little ink bottle. Bink. It appears to be empty. Now, I'm not sure. Um, let me try a little experiment here. I'm going to save. So now the point of the invisible... The, yeah, okay, why well, spoiled it? It's invisible ink because eh, it looks like an empty bottle, but it's totes not, and he didn't know the value of it. So this is how you fool the guard with the eyes at the end because, you know, he's going to see you just standing there. But if you use the invisible ink... Alexander decides to open the empty ink bottle. It's stuck. It's... Whoa! The ink bottle isn't empty at all. It's full of invisible ink. Not very strong, but not bad. Wait, so just what, what, what happened there? I think what happened is some of the ink spilled on me, and you could see behind me, but because the, the background is, is brown, it didn't show up very much. Let's try that somewhere else. All right, this might have more of a... A better backdrop. Alexander doesn't want to waste his invisible ink. A thing like that might come in handy. I will not be denied. Well, it's as good a time as any to visit the Island of the Beast because there's this, uh... There's a little bit more color here. It's... Whoa! There we go. Now you can kind of tell. There's the rock behind me, so... The ink bottle isn't empty at all. Ah. Not... Got it. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. So, it does allow you to open it and find out what it is. I, I never do that. This game makes so much sense. I love it. All right. Back to the Isle of Wonder. See you there. All right. So, now that we have the Nightingale, it's the only other thing that we have that can make a sound and doesn't sound human. 
Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. I love his little dance. A nose is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. Taste, grum trump, that we might know whether the friend or whether the foe. I love Grump Frump. He's my favorite just because I like his name so much. So he just needs to taste that you're not human, which is weird. I don't think he just tastes a big lick of you, does he? Does he just taste the air around you? My tongue betrays this one so sly. Pink. A man it is, I tell no lie. A man, a man so sell our tongue. To the realm of the dead we send this one. And that's the way it could have gone. Uh, I don't think I have anything else that really tastes like anything. But, uh, I mean, there's the mint, obviously. But let's see what happens if we give him something else to taste. Like, uh, how about, um, a pearl? Yeah, what's a, what's a pearl taste like? Actually, no, let's give him the flower. A flower's got to taste great. Alexander holds the item out for the gnome with the oversized mouth. The item. My tongue dislikes this sour thing, and the taste of man all over it clings. Interesting. So he said it tasted sour, but it tasted like it's got the sting of me all over it. Um, I wonder what the bird tastes like. No, no, no. I'm going to hold out the pearl. The pearl can't taste sour, can it? Alexander holds... My tongue dislikes this sour thing. Okay, so I don't think it really matters what you hold out to him. That's not the mint. It's going to be sour no matter what. I was hoping that they would have like a different line. Like, this is sour. This is sweet. This is... Doesn't taste like anything. I've got fur all over my tongue, he would say. But here you go. Here's a mint. Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. Grump Frump knows a tasty treat. It matters not what others bleat. No danger is this one so sweet. All right, thanks, Grumpy. Tree Dilly, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? All right, Trilly Dilly. Let's get it on. So you need to give him something that uh, feels very unhuman, uh, which is pretty much anything that I have. Like a flower does not feel like a human. But uh, let's let him put his hands all over me because uh, it looks like he's got pretty skilled fingers. Go right ahead. I'm over here. My hands know what the rest do not. A man is standing on this spot. Doesn't rhyme. A man, a man, so say our hands. We act at the wizard's command. Oh, there we go. So it's a little bit more obvious now that they work for the wizard. Got it. Okay. Um, I tell you what, a uh, flower doesn't really feel like a man. And then the original guy with the uh, with the smell said, "Hey, there's a flower here, so let's keep things consistent." And it's like, yeah, it's just a flower. Alexander holds the item out for the gnome with the massive hands. My hands cannot be led astray. A man is here. That's plain as day. Okay, well, fine. So we'll just pretend that a uh, a rabbit just uh, flew up on shore. Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Huh? A rabbit? Be all you mad? What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare does not at all taste sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. Old Bill Batter, never fatter. Vision can resolve this matter. Look you now and end this chatter. Now, an interesting point. Uh, I know it's just silly, but if only one person has the ability to hear and one has the ability to see, 
How were they talking with each other? How are they hearing each other's... I, you, you know what? I'm sorry. All right, take a big old steamy gawk at Prince Alexander. How you doing? Of all the senses, eyes are best. A man, I say, and hang the rest. A man, a man, so say our eyes. A man he be, a man he dies. I don't think there's much else that I could show him. Uh, like, oh, it's just a bird. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and plays it for the gnome. <laughs> look, it's just a birdie. Don't look at me. Look at the bird. Ooh. You're not going to look at it? Open your eyes. Take it like a look. It's cute. It's playing just for you. My eyes cannot distracted be. A man I see, and so say me. I also like that they call him, uh, what was it, Bill Batter, never fatter. He's like the, the skinniest guy here. All right, well, let's use the invisible link. There's, no, oops. <laughs> nice freeze frame. Alexander pours the contents of the empty looking ink bottle over himself. By all that's beauteous, fair, and sightly, four morons do I sleep with nightly. There's nothing there at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away. Oh, please last just a little bit longer. I also like it when they all stack up, because when they're all together like that, they form one fully functioning person. All right, Alex. Alexander did it. He's fooled the guards. Guards. <laughs> Okay, now we'll never see them again. I never know where they go because there's only two or three other screens you can go to and one is walled off. So I don't know where they go to sleep. I'm kind of curious. If they ever make a remake of this game, I want to see where the gnomes live. All right, and originally I wanted to go this way just because I like this side better. This is some of my favorite music in the game. Love it. All right, there's so much to do here. We got bees, we got books, we got spiders. What else could you possibly want in your graphic adventure game? Piles of stacked books, looking ready to topple at any moment, have been arranged haphazardly on the sandy ground. The tail end of this island is a riotous scramble of books, sand, and a spider's web. Something about the, the riotous scramble. Good writing. I like it. The tail end of this. Let's get the bees. Hi, bees. The tail end of. The no, I want to look tail at the bees. Little bees buzz around the books as though the pages were laden with the sweetest pollen. Maybe they're spelling bees. Oh, I never heard that joke before. Oh, it's cute. Mm, wow. Hi, gorgeous. Oh, what a luscious looking hunk of flesh you are. Uh, thank you, I guess. <laughs> Awkward. Who are you? <gasps> How charming of you to pretend not to know. I'm Black Widow, of course. The femme fatale of all femme fatales. Know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking it was time I found my 50th, uh, another husband. It would be quite a horror. Uh, I mean, an honor to have me as a bride. Just look at my beautiful weaving. It's so light, so delicate. You'll never want to leave my little nest. Hmm. It is a lovely web, but my heart is elsewhere, I'm afraid. Oh, drat! Uh, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> the loss is yours. I'm sure you'll change your mind once you consider the advantages. I'm trying to think of some of the possible advantages here, lady, and I'm not really coming up with anything. A black widow is sitting in her web. She has long legs and an hourglass on her belly. She gives Alexander a knowing look. Hmm. With that come-hither stare and that hourglass figure, how could I say no? <laughs> Have you changed your mind? My offer of dead... <laughs> wedlock is still open. All right. Hey, you know what? Screw Kasima. Let's get hitched. Alexander reaches out to touch the Black Widow. Ah, oh, 
How sweet the matrimony. I knew you'd change your mind. Alexander feels the sharp prick of the Black Widow's teeth. Then, a strange burning sensation. Well, I love how it has its own ending sting. Ah, a widow again. Tickets out. Next. Why do you think they call her a widow? And it's kind of weird that she lives only to kill. Like, she doesn't wrap you up in the web and, like, save you and, like, eat you or anything. Anyway, there's something a little bit more obvious that uh, I think we need. We don't, well, I don't know what it is, but. That scrap of paper blew into my web from those books over there. The wind just thinks it can deposit anything here. <laughs> well, have you ever thought about removing it if you don't like it okay so we can't grab it because she just comes in well kills us but you'll notice a, a little mistake in her web here a thread is hanging from the otherwise tightly woven web mine now hey don't touch that thread ah. alexander snatches the scrap of parchment curious to see what's written on it Oh. Up. The wind blows the scrap of paper from Alexander's hand, but he remembers what it said well enough. Okay, that's important. It doesn't add anything to your inventory, but to hear that ding, so something's stored away in Alexander's little empty head there. Um, now, I think there's other things to do around here, but I forget how, so let's just talk to the ether. Alexander can't see any way to hold a conversation with that. Alexander should read the books if he wants to get information from them. Oh, right. That makes sense. Hi. What do you think you're doing? Pink. I'm sorry. I... I didn't realize these books had an owner. I'm in need of a rare book. <laughs> no owner. All books have owners, my good man. And this book owner, bookworm to you, wouldn't part with one of his books for anything. Isn't there something I can do for you to pay for the book? Hmm, let's see. Do you have an itinerant clause? No. No clauses at all, I'm afraid. As an exception, you always should! <laughs> oh, grammar jokes. Don't mind Oxymoron and Diphthong. They're fairly limited grammatical principles, you know. Mm, <laughs> Love this island. <laughs> A marsh pig that does Texas? Uh, no. I'm afraid not. A dangling participle? I'm fresh out. A purple fiddlewhacker? No, I don't think so. Sorry. An idiosyncrasy, perhaps? Right not. Ha! Huh. Then what good are you? Hmm. All right, so there are a lot of rare books around here that I can give to Ali for the Book of Magic Spells, which I will really, really need. But uh, he needs something in trade. Um, let me see. How about this weird sentence? I have this weird sentence. This is kind of literary. I have a sentence. Would that do? An incomplete one, I suppose. <laughs> um, Why, actually, it is incomplete. Just as I suspected, incomplete sentences are a dime a dozen. Where you can literally just find them floating about. Complete sentences. Ooh, now there's something that's hard to come by these days. I see. Sorry. I also like how uh, we're just talking about complete sentences and Alexander re responds solely in sentence fragments. Adorable. And I believe that, uh, I'm forgetting if that was Oxymoron or Diphthong. I think it was Oxymoron was played by our one and only King Graham, Josh Mandel. I think. His, his voice is hard to, uh, it's uh, it's hard to forget. All right, all right. We we'll have to come back there with something that Bookworm will want, but we can take this opportunity to explore the rest of the Island. Hmm. 
Certainly a lot of biomes on this small island. I'm coming at a little, uh, little King's Quest V flashback here. Beautiful little swamp. And I think a couple of the jokes here are going to be recycled in Torin's Passage. Um, with the whole swamp ooze and swamp muck and scum and whatever. But uh, I think it's kind of... Something about this is randomized. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, there's a milk plant. Let's grab one of those. That's what looks really obvious. Alexander takes a bottle of milk from the milkweed bush. <coughs> Apparently, the dogwood tree doesn't like Alexander standing that close. But there's nothing you can do about it, dog, because you are stuck in the trees. I don't. I think as no matter how close I get to you, there's nothing you can do about me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do about it, puppy? Nanny, me all up in your face in the grill. But I got the milk. The glass bottle is full of milk. How strange for a plant to produce not only milk, but a container to go with it. Best island ever. I'm retiring here. The Isle of Wonder Swamp oozes with muck, moss, and mud. Crickets and frogs sing an endless serenade, and the green filtered light adds to the sense of dampness here. A mushy swamp lies just off the path. It doesn't look like very good swimming. A large tree stretches knotted limbs out over the swamp. Boop. Part of the tree's trunk is shaped like the face of a dog. Why, it must be a dogwood tree. You already made that joke. A stick is stuck in the middle of the swamp. A tough old log lies to the left of the path. The fallen log has a good-sized knot or bump. A cluster of cattails flourishes near the muck of the swamp. Everything has a description. The fertile swamp is dense with moss-covered trees. All right, nothing much to do here. We got the milk, so let's roll. Aw, one of my favorite places, the garden. Alexander is standing in a delectable garden. Nestled in the bright green grass are colorful plants growing in orderly clusters. Some of their curious faces peer up at Alexander from the sides of the path. The garden ends at a speckled gate. A curiously speckled gate marks one end of the garden. Mm, so much to see and do. You're standing out a lot. What are you? There appears to be a hole in the garden wall. Through oh. the hole in the wall, Alexander sees a land that resembles a giant chessboard. Wow, it really is a hole in the wall. Zounds, those wallflowers sure are shy, and the snapdragons are awfully protective of them. Alexander can't even get close to the wallflowers without causing quite a stir. Okay, so... He doesn't want to play with a hole in the wall because it affects the flowers and then the snapdragons get all bitchy about it. But again, there's nothing they can do. They're sort of rooted in place. Can I take the hole in the wall with me? Alexander decides to pick up the hole in the wall. A hole in the wall could be a very useful thing. Check. Alexander startled the poor thing. It's run off to hide behind the wallflowers. Hmm. And now I can't get him at all because that starts that chain reaction. The wallflowers, overcome with shyness at Alexander's approach, cluster together and cover the hole in the wall. Alexander can't get it. Alright, so that'll be a puzzle that we have to solve. How do we get the wallflowers to lose their shyness? Interesting. The wallflowers look terribly shy. An elegant padded chair provides a cushy seat from which to enjoy the lively garden. I've always been confused as to the, the presence of this chair because I don't think it actually has any purpose. Why is it there? Alexander would love to sit a spell, but he's a tad busy at the moment. I do not remember if that chair actually has a purpose or not. A colorful array of snapdragons stand guard to one side of the path. Is that lettuce growing in the garden? It looks a little chilled. Why, it must be iceberg lettuce. Uh. Vines of sweet ripening tomatoes climb up little wooden posts. They're so happy. This is one of my favorite little things. Good day, tomato vines. Good morning. I, I love it. 
cute. They're so happy. Except for this one. Alexander takes a close look at the tomato on the ground. It appears to be darker than those on the vines. What are you staring at there, boy? Go away, you rootless thing, you! Yeah! Yep, that tomato is definitely rotten. Hello, Rotten Tomato. How did you manage to fall off the vine, Mr. Tomato? What do you think? I'm old, I'm rotten! Yeah! Leave me alone! Yeah. If you say so. After all, you're just gonna let me sit here and rot on this dry ground like everybody else, aren't you? Why, I don't know. I, I suppose... Ah, never mind! Just go away! Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah... Yeah, let's... let's... Well, first of all, let's take a happy tomato. Those tomatoes are not quite ripe yet, and Alexander shouldn't pull them off the vine. Oh god, murdering innocent tomatoes. Alright, Rotten Tomato, come with me. You're my pal now. Hey! What do you think you're doing there? Get your hands off me! Hey! You're mine now. You can't defend yourself. Alexander picks up Rotten Tomato and puts him away. One never knows when one will need a Rotten Tomato. And he just lives with me now. You're ugly and you smell bad. Yeah! Put me down before I juice all over you! Uh, you can just talk to him whenever you want. Whenever you need to feel a little bit more bad about yourself, there's Rotten Tomato to help you out. Where were you born? A barn? It's a pigsty back here! Yeah! All this stuff you got! What do you want to carry all this trash around for? What do you want from me? A recitation or something? Leave me alone! Yeah! Yeah! All right, so he just says those three things, but I love you, Rotten Tomato. The old Rotten Tomato gives Alexander a mean look and grumbles sourly. Oh, Rotten Tomato, you're ours now. Unless Alexander is mistaken, those plants must be baby's tears. Hmm, they don't look too sad. Those grapes look awfully sour. Sour grapes? Clinging vines climb the garden wall. Two fat stone pillars surround the gate. Above them float pieces of stone that seem to be in open rebellion against the laws of gravity. I never actually took the time to look at those before. I was always kind of curious about how those is kind of suspended, but then we're in a fantasy game. It doesn't point out what these are, though. That's kind of weird. Okay, anyway. Um, hi, babies. Hello. Aren't you a bunch of fine-looking young plants? Apparently, the baby's tears haven't learned to talk yet. Well, um, well, here you go. I got a bottle of milk. Do you want some milkies? Alexander gives one of the baby's tears a bottle of milk. The other baby's tears seem to resent Alexander's gift for some reason. Ah, um, I'm sorry. Uh, shut up. I'll take it away. What a grip. The baby is not at all willing to let go of that milk bottle. Okay, I can't deal with that sound anymore. Uh, get away, get away, get away. Okay, good. They shut up. The hole in the wall is back where he belongs. Okay, now we've seen everything. I think we can finally get this moving. Um, but though, there are a couple of ways that you can get yourself killed here that don't involve the snapdragons. Actually, I don't think the snapdragons can kill you. Good day, snapdragons. The snapdragons don't seem inclined to communicate with anyone. Those snapdragons don't like Alexander getting so close. Yeah, they're, they're completely harmless. Greetings, ladies. How charming you look today. <laughs> the wallflowers are too shy to talk to Alexander. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. The hole in the wall does not respond to Alexander's soothing voice. Perhaps it's going in one ear and out the other. Ah, clever. Excuse me, lettuce. The lettuce just gives Alexander the cold, cold shoulder. shoulder. Yeah, I had a feeling that was coming. Hmm. What curious clinging vines are on this wall? We know we're fascinating, but no one ever visits us. We're lonely. That's too bad. Oh. We just want to be liked. We just want to be hugged. We've been clinging to this wall, but he's gotten boring. I see. Sucks to be you. Perhaps you should find a new place. Don't be stupid. We're clinging vines.
seems not particularly mobile. No, I don't suppose so. Well, good luck. Well, screw you. <laughs> good luck with your crappy life. But we can make their lives a little bit better. All they wanted was a hug, right? Just Alexander a hug. decides to examine the vines on the wall more closely. Come closer! We like you! I, um, uh, appreciate <coughs> your enthusiasm. <coughs> but I'm really not interested. Don't leave us! We like you! So clingy. Black. Oh, I thought that animation would be a little bit longer. Tickets. Oh. Next. Just want to be loved by you. Aww. All right, well, we're going to leave them to their misery. What? Alexander addresses the grapes. Why are you so sour, if you don't mind my asking? Well, we'll tell you. How would you like to have the possibility of being made into wine hanging over your head? And then, there's our neighbors, the clinging vines. All they do all day is whine about the Ivy League social climbers that never call. It's really just no fun at all. Hmm, that's too bad. Well, I hope things start looking up. Thanks a lot. For nothing. It's so, it's so condescending. It's like, well, that's too bad. Can I get some grapes? Alexander gets closer to the sour grapes. Oh, I hope the vines don't get me. Back off, bucko! Whoa. Oh, uh, excuse me. Hmm, all right, well, the grapes are a no-go. Alexander I... gets a little too close to the vines on uh, the wall. Dang it. Come closer! We like you! I, uh, appreciate... <coughs> don't! I think the only thing we can grab in here right now is the iceberg lettuce. Alexander picks a head of iceberg lettuce. Ye gads! Is that cold? Yep, and into my butt it goes. Now everything in my pocket is naturally refrigerated. Alexander is carrying a full head of a queer-looking lettuce made of ice. The lettuce is rapidly melting. That object has nothing to say. Aw, oh, generic message number 85. I'm not sure if we can at this point, but I think we, uh, next time we're gonna have to go venture through this mysterious pizza gate and uh, see, oh, did I just say Pizzagate? Oh, that's awkward. Uh, scrap that. But we'll head up through Pepperoni Gate, uh, and then we'll see what's up through there. And then I think we have enough clues to start exploring the Island of the Beast and really get this plot a moving. So until then, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.